When you're writing applications, it's good practice to avoid long repetitive programs. When a big application is broken down into several sub-programs, it makes it much easier to understand. Well-structured applications are therefore easier to upgrade and easier to fix if they go wrong. Sub-programs include procedures and functions. In Python, there isn't much difference between a procedure and a function. In this lesson, you'll learn about procedures, and you'll learn about functions in another lesson. I'm going to start by writing a program that asks the user for a couple of numbers and then adds them together. You've seen something like this in an earlier lesson. Let's quickly give it a try to make sure it's working. And I'm saving it in a folder called Python Programs Structured Application. I'll call it calculator.py. And there's a small syntax error, so I'll quickly fix that. And now it's working fine. Always try to fix bugs as you go along. Test your program while you're developing it. You don't want a big pile of problems at the end. Now I'm going to develop the program by asking the user for a couple of numbers to multiply together, and maybe a couple of numbers to subtract. And I've included a few messages to say what the program is about to do. Again, let's quickly test it. And it seems to be working fine. Now, I'm going to add some extra code to give the user the option to continue the program. I'll do this at various checkpoints. So I'm telling the user what I'm about to do, and I'm asking, do you want to carry on? Whatever the user types in gets loaded into the variable called checkpoint, and then I'm testing checkpoint. If checkpoint equals yes, in other words, if the user typed yes, then we'll ask for the two numbers and we'll add them together. Let's do the same with the other calculations. I will add two numbers. Do you want to carry on? Yes. Put the two numbers in. I will multiply two numbers. Do you want to carry on? No, I don't. I will subtract one number from another. Do you want to carry on? Let's go six minus four. Of course, I didn't type yes, so the program assumes I don't want to carry on. I'm pretty sure this is working, although I should really test every execution path properly. As I said, there's nothing new here. We've covered arithmetic in another video, and I've covered if statements in a different video as well. I'm just putting things together in a different way. Now, what I'd like to do is ask the user every now and then how happy they are. Bear with me, it sounds a bit silly, but it will illustrate how I can make good use of a sub-program. To keep things simple, I'm asking the user to tell me how happy they are on a scale of 1 to 10. So let's suppose 1 is unhappy and 10 is very happy. Oh, notice how I've taken my input statement and I've wrapped it up inside int. So whatever the user types in, is immediately converted into an integer, and then this gets loaded into how happy. Now, let's test the contents of that variable and give the user an appropriate message depending on their mood. If the user has a happiness level of 1, we'll say, oh dear, how sad, never mind. If the happiness is either 2, 3 or 4, we'll say, hang in there, it could be worse. See, I'm trying to be positive here. If the happiness level is 5, then we'll say that's OK. And if the happiness level is 6, 7, 8 or 9, we'll say that's good to hear. Notice I've done this in a slightly different way here. Rather than using the OR operator, I'm asking if the happiness is within the range 6 to 9. To specify that it goes 6, 7, 8 or 9, I have to put a 10 here. 
That's a little bit odd, but that's the way this particular facility works. If the user types in a happiness of 10 or more, then we'll say fantastic. I haven't really taken control of the range of values that the user can type in. They could actually type any number they like, or they could type some text. Validating the input is something we can talk about in another video. Well, let's give this a try anyway and see if it works. I'll close this window so I can have a fresh one. How happy are you on a scale of 1 to 10? Let's say I am happiness level 1. Oh dear, how sad, never mind. And then we get into the rest of the program. Do you want to carry on? No, no, no. Let's try my mood checking routine again. Let's try a happiness level of three. Hang in there, could be worse. And let's try six. That's good to hear. And finally, we'll try ten. That seems to be working fine. To be honest, Again, I should check every execution path. I should try all of the possible numbers between 1 and 10, just to be absolutely sure that this is working. I'm satisfied that it is. Now, suppose I want to check the user's happiness level in between each calculation. What I'm going to do is copy and paste this code from here to here and to here. And maybe I'll ask again at the end. And as you can see, I have a lot of repetition in my program. The same block of code is appearing over and over again. I can make my program much simpler by writing a procedure to check the mood. And then I can call that procedure whenever I need to. Let me show you what I mean. Let's get rid of all of this repetition first. And I'm going to put this block of code into a separate procedure. It's very easy to do. So there's the same block of code, but I've given that block of code a name. I've called this block of code check mood. To define a procedure, you use the def keyword. Now, if I just test my program again, my check mood routine is not actually running. We've gone straight into, I will add two numbers together. Do you want to carry on? If I want this code to run, I have to call it. And I can call it like this. I simply type the name of the procedure. And I can call it here. And I can call it here. And here. And in fact, anywhere I want. You just call it by name. Let's give it a try. And it seems to be working fine. Now let me show you what happens if I move this procedure definition to the bottom of this file. I'm going to cut it from here and paste it down here. So, same code. Things are just in different places. When I run the program, I'm getting an error message. Name check mood is not defined. I'm trying to call the procedure here, but the way Python works is it interprets the code. In other words, it translates and executes one line at a time, starting from the top and working its way down. When I call the procedure, Python hasn't seen it yet. The procedure doesn't exist as far as Python is concerned. Therefore, if I want this subroutine to be inside the same file, I need to put it at the top. Alternatively, I could put it in a separate file. Let's do that. I'm going to remove the code from here altogether and paste it into this file. Now I'm going to save this file and I'm saving it in the same place as the program that's going to use it. I'll call it moodchecker.py. 
Now I'm going to close it, and I'm going to add a simple command at the top of this program. Import Mood Checker. And finally, I need to put this in front of each call to the Check Mood program. Mood Checker dot Check Mood. So it's the name of the file and then the name of the procedure inside that file. Notice that moodchecker.py is closed. I don't have it open. Let's try it out. And clearly, it's working. You may recognize this command. I've used import before. If you've used the Python turtle, you'll have come across it. You'll have also seen that we need to qualify the name of the program we want to call with the name of the file that it's in. Why not give this a try yourself? Write an application which relies on calling a sub-procedure in a different file.